You have to gold is a philosophy that only allows you to buy players 19 years of age or younger, while trying to sell players who are 30 and above, with the aim of developing young cheap talents and selling the older players for huge profits. To achieve the ultimate goal of building the side to win the Champions League. And this year, the club I have chosen it's Mallorca. After my dad and I's amazing trip there recently, we just had to. But of course, Barcelona and Real Madrid are going to make this even harder to win trophies. However, with some of our players in their 30s just joining the club, it's going to take us a season to really install our philosophy, as well as the fact that we got a tiny transfer budget. So we may just breeze through this first transfer window without any money and get to the action. So to catch you up, my first task was the backroom staff. We had zero scouts to begin with, so we need to find some with fantastic judging potential and adapt. Ability. And once I got most of my backroom staff in, including all of the scouts, I could then start assigning the scouts through recruitment focuses. I know a lot of you are going to be doing youth to gold saves and want to know what is the best way of setting up your scouts, so let me show you. I've only got six scouts plus a chief scout, and as you can see, I've got six recruitment focuses done already, and I'm going to do one more. So this is how I would actually do it. Create recruitment focus, go down to this drop menu, press any, select any, because I don't really care about my formation yet. I just want to find all these players in the future. So Select transfer. I'm going to keep going back until I get to a five star or five silver star because that's going to be the youth rating. Uh, then I'm going to be having a look at this one and I want my potential to be roughly four star potential or more because if I go five star, I'm not going to get as many players. Let's go four star for now. Of course, the maximum age is going to be 19. I don't want any more uh, than 19. That's not allowed. Ongoing. Now, at the minute, because I haven't got that many scouts, I've got every single scout out other than one, which is William Santos. I'm going to bring him in. And I've got, and I'll show the locations in a second where they're all dotted around. So I'm going to select the area for this guy. Uh, I want there to be three or four different nations. So I want Argentina. I want Brazil as well. Uh, and then let's take a look. I want to have a look also in... Germany and probably Spain as well because that's obviously I've got them covered twice already but getting Spanish players in is going to be quite crucial. I'm going to click confirm on that one. I'm going to untick this one so that he's going to find different people compared to the one that I've already got and this one I'm going to name best nations because these are the nations that I want to be finding the best players from. In fact, I'm actually going to add one more from Europe and that is going to be the Netherlands because they are always chucking out some really good players as well. So that's five nations from there that I've got to select confirm. Now the rest of them you can see I've got one exactly identical setup for Spain. Uh, I've got one exactly identical setup for the whole of Europe. The same for Africa. Now cheap nations you might like this one as well. I've got nine different countries here that I usually find cheap wonder kids from. Denmark, Croatia, Austria, Norway, Romania, Serbia, Sweden, Switzerland, and Czech Republic. Those nations I always tend to find really good cheap wonder kids from, and they're European. That's basically what I've got set up, and I've got a UK one too, as well as a South America, okay? That's as easy as that. For now, with only six scouts and a chief scout, that's all I'm setting up. I do welcome my first signing through the door from Real Madrid, the left-footed centre-back Montolio, who is just 16 years of age with 16 for passing and tackling for just under 300k. And tactically, for season one, before we really find our identity, we're going to go for this 4-3-1-2 formation. And we brought in another signing from Locomotiva for 450k up front with a deal that could amount to a few million with add-ons. The first game of the season swiftly came at us against Celta Vigo and we find ourselves a goal down after just a 11 minutes second half and again we were starting slow and Celta doubled their lead 10 minutes from the break just three minutes later after Mariki went off injured his replacement Abdon pulled a goal back and in the 92nd minute Maffeo sprayed the ball out wide to Raylo who took a chance at the defender and squeezing the equaliser. And we followed that with a 3-1 home win against Hitafe. And our striker Mariki was back from injury to help us beat Granada 5-1. And that fantastic start to the season sees us sat in sixth place with a difficult month ahead. But the transfer window is now closed shut until January. But our recruitment focuses are already well underway, finding us future prospects to add to our shortlist we may have to call upon soon. And as I mentioned, I've just started a future prospect shortlist where any players I really like, 
such as Justin Deal, I can keep a closer eye on. Our first loss came against Almeria at home, and Abdon probably had the best start for us, scoring in the win away to Real Batiste. Real Madrid then came for a visit, and we started so well and took the lead through Giovanni Gonzalez. But in the second half, already on a yellow card, the same Gonzalez brought down Vinicius Jr. to receive his second yellow card, and he is off. Still, I am so proud of the team, despite too many equalizer not long after from a fantastic strike. And then the legend and former Ballon d'Or winner, Luka Modric, winning the game with an unbelievable free kick. Another loss to Real Sociedad and the month doesn't look great, but I personally am quite satisfied with how the team performed. Then we went unbeaten throughout the whole of October by drawing all four games. Our own incompetence in defending and passing out from the back led to Barcelona taking the lead against us, but then they remembered they are Barcelona and they started knocking the ball around a bit and they battered us 4-0. We hosted Villarreal and had a horrendous first half conceding to Raul Albiol, but came out in the second half much more fired up and Samu leveled the scoring before Kyle Lahren opened up his body and smashed in the winner. But still, we drew two more games. It's our favourite thing to do. In December, possibly at the worst time though, we went on an incredible run. Starting with a win against Alaves after going a goal down. Followed by beating Bill Bilbao with Maffeo and Mariki really standing out. And once again, coming from behind, this time just 2-0 after just 7 minutes. And then defeating Sevilla 1-0 from the penalty spot. And taking our only loss this month away to Atletico Madrid. Followed by a win in the Copa del Rey first round. And I said it was at the wrong time because it was December, right before the transfer window just opened, and now we're getting bids for all of our players. Starting almost immediately, we received a bid which I rejected for Maffeo and Abdon, which the club rejected the negotiation. But just a day later, Manchester United activated Maffeo's release clause of £21 million. However, he turned them down as well as Arsenal to go to Saudi Arabia for absolutely ridiculous wages. While that was going on, we welcomed Nigerian 18-year-old goalkeeper in Walsu to the club on a free transfer. In my South American recruitment focus, however, I had already targeted my Maffeo replacement, penning the injury that he currently has from San Lorenzo. But we had to act fast as he turned 20 on the 16th of January and he signs just three days before that. Mariki was the other wanted star in our squad after 10 goals in the first 19 games and many clubs were interested. And again, Manchester United activated his £29 million release clause. That's a lot of money that you can buy replacements with and of course, a lot of other wonder kids still, right? It would have been if Lazio did not receive 45% of it. It's a shame to see these first teamers go because even during January, January, both of them were playing outstanding for us, scoring all three goals between them in a win to Hitafe. Mariki also scored both goals for us against Celta Vigo. At least he got his final goodbye to the fans in his last game as we beat Granada 2-0. While looking for his replacement, we had £18 million and I went for my number one target this January in Rafael Luis of Benfica, managing to secure a deal that eventually could climb to £9 million. But I think the Portuguese 18-year-old be worth every single penny for us and starts in our starting 11. And he banged in the winner on his debut for us against Hirona in the Copa del Rey. Replacing Mariki, however, was a lot more difficult than what I thought it would be. Despite us obviously having a very good recruitment focus, we didn't have any strikers that could com come in in the first team right away. So what I've had to do is I've loaned Nelson Viper, uh, who is a very good German striker, in the same kind of stature as Mariki, he's six foot four, he's a bit of a powerhouse. Uh, with good head and ability and good finishing. He's nowhere near the standard of Mariki, but he's only 18. Now, the reason why I couldn't sign him outright was because he had just signed a new contract in December, meaning he didn't want to leave. However, we have loaned into the end of the season. We do have an optional future fee. We might even pay less than that optional future fee uh, to bring him in on a permanent deal. Should he play well? He wasn't the only signing though that we made. We did spend a little bit more money, 2.3 million pound on Zidane, Sert Demir, uh, 18 year old Danish center attacking midfielder, who's not gonna be playing first team football for us yet, but by next season, I'm hoping we'll be able to bet into the side. Again, he's only 18, but good potential. 2.3 million pound is an absolute steal. He went to Norgeland, went to Bayer Leverkusen, back to Norgeland. Now we're at Mallorca, maybe he will sign for Norgeland again after us. In the summer, we also have some free transfers. We're looking at Hugo Berincha from Real Zaragoza, 17 years of age. Again, it's just a freebie. James DeBio, a centre-back from Leeds. Really good first touch and tackling and technique. Again, only 18 years of age. And finally, we have Arsen Diaw, 18 years of age, winger or striker, who has fantastic physicals, maybe just needs to catch up 
elsewhere. But five-star potential and again, a free transfer. Can't really complain. Nor can we complain about our form. We've won every game in January. An incredible month for us despite losing our two best players, arguably, and we now sit in fifth. But as you can see, both Mariki and Mafia was up there in the player statistics. And boy, did we miss them as the season went on. We did beat Real Batiste 1-0 during February. But that was our only win as we then lost both to Barcelona and Real Madrid, who actually tonked us 7-0, as well as Sociedad and Almeria. Nelson Viper finally scored his first goal for us after five appearances in a win against Vallecano. And with two months of the season remaining, we still had hopes of European football next season. But an absolute drumming from Valencia made me think we are being quite naive. This draw at home to Las Palmas proved that we missed the attacking threat Mariki and Mafeo provided, and we already hit stage two of youth to go so soon in the project. Stage two is basically where you start to sell all of your already established players, maybe the best players in your squad, like Mafeo and like Mariki, and start trying to embed the new young signings that you have brought in, try and replace them, which obviously is never going to help straight away. They need a little bit of development and you're probably going to see a dip in your form. That's stage two. And the step to stage three is always the hardest because you're waiting for your young signings to develop to become better players. It's a scrappy and very frustrating time, but it's well worth it when it pays off eventually. And that's why I love Youth to Gold. We drew three more games in April, but Nelson scored two goals in four games. It's just a case of at the end of the season, whether I'd see his price tag as being worth bringing him in on a permanent or not. Unfortunately, just one win and four draws in the last two months has harmed our push for European football this season, but that would have been an overachievement anyway. With the original plan for this season just to accomplish a mid-table finish, which we should definitely do. The youth fintech give us a couple of new talents that have potential to grow into something. But that's not what Mallorca are known for, as they only have half a star for their youth recruitment. But it is something I'd like to improve every season. Our final run of fixtures is tough with games against Barcelona, Sevilla, Atletico and Bilbao. And the first game against Alaves didn't start great as Samuel Morodion assisted Alcain for the opening goal. But it only did take us four minutes to pull us back to 1-1, which is how it finished. We took the lead against Barcelona, but Robert Lewandowski. We also lost to Sevilla away from home, but we did manage to beat Atletico thanks to a Nelson Viper header at the back post. He also managed to score against Bilbao on the final day from Luis's assist. Unfortunately, we still lost that match and our end of season puts us on 51 points in 11th position, but that's just where the fun begins. The highlighted eight players are all running out of contract and to be released, including Danny Rodriguez, who has started 35 league games this season, but is aged 35. And Abdon, who is also a fan favourite of the club. We have £20 million in our transfer budget for now, with a lot of players to analyse that we could potentially bring in. And a big decision as to whether or not we make Nelson Vipers transfer a permanent one to Mallorca this summer. 